Hey there, welcome. We are going to, in this video, review uh, the use of the colon, punctuation mark. So uh, the colon actually, right, is a less commonly used punctuation mark. And some people think using the colon stinks, uh, but it's really useful actually to get things moving in a sentence. Uh, and since it's a punctuation mark that's neglected, you know, some people have a blockage when it comes to using the colon. So with this video, right, we're going to clear the air and go over the rules for colon usage. Um, colons aren't just used in writing down the time or ratios as you, uh, if you're a math person or you have a watch, you won't, you know already. So let's go over some of these rules and look at some examples. So by the end of this, we have a great kind of grasp on what, what's happening in the colon. All right, so rule number one, right? The use of the colon is at the end of a complete sentence when you're introducing like even one item or a list of items, right? Lists can even be multiple sentences and lists can also be like numbered or bulleted. So let's take a look at how those things look. Um, there's only one word I can use to describe our first date, colon disaster. So notice it wasn't a proper noun there, disaster, so I did not capitalize it. Um, in this case though, right, the colon sets up this one word to have a more dramatic effect. It, it adds an emphasis to it. It kind of just um, gives it a little punch. So there's your first example with just one word. Okay, second example with a list. There were several things I couldn't find on my trip to Target. Toilet paper, Clorox wipes, flower and Pokemon hollow foil trading cards, all right? Uh, this here uh, is the example actually probably most people are familiar with using the colon in a sentence is just a list of things. And often we'll hear it with phrases like the following things or the following items and you have the colon and then you have the list. So this one, you know, most people are familiar with, uh, but you can see that, you know, there's the list there after the colon. Okay, so the list, right, as I said, could be sentences as well. Like in this example, these are the rules I try to live by, colon, don't be too serious, try to eat chocolate regularly, get plenty of vitamin E. So I just have three sentences there, you know, capitalized and written out, and they all came after the colon, and that actually makes it one unit, even though there's four sentences technically there. Okay, so on a numbered or bulleted list, right, you start with the complete sentence and then the colon, and then you just list, uh, set up the list differently uh, so that it's numbered or bulleted as you go down. And in this example, you can see, don't forget the following steps when loading the dishwasher colon. And then I've numbered each of the steps, I've indented them, um, and then they're just little snippets. I didn't even capitalize it, although you could capitalize it. That's kind of a a stylistic thing, just be consistent with whatever you do, whether it's bulleted or numbered, just be consistent in how you set it up. Next one, number two, use a colon between two complete sentences if the second sentence is a conclusion of the first or illustrates the first or gives emphasis to the first. Okay, so the first example, uh, we were so looking forward to trying Kevin's famous chili colon it was a tragedy when he dropped it on the floor while walking into the office. And so this is kind of like the conclusion or the follow up to the first one. And so I can use the colon to like add the dramatic effect uh, into that as well. Now, in this case, right, uh, the second sentence, I did not capitalize it. And if you actually tool around the Internet, you're going to hear both ways. There will be some uh, sources that say you should capitalize the second sentence even if it's not a capital, uh, even if it's not a proper noun, and others will tell you not to. In this case, I did not. Second example to look at. So in this example, um, it kind of gives, uh, I guess, an example or a reason as to why the first statement was made. Yosemite was the best part of our vacation, colon, there was something to do that made everybody happy. Now in this case, I capitalized the second sentence and you can see that just looking at it, you can understand why you might go either way. And so if you're writing for somebody like an instructor, you might just want to ask which rule that they go by so they don't uh, have a problem with it. And that's just kind of the way it, it goes on those things. But both, in both of these examples, 
you can see that the second sentence kind of, you know, dives deeper or illuminates or expands the details of the first. It brings more power and emphasis to the second sentence. Okay, and so this is number three is an interesting one that you can use a colon to introduce quotations more powerfully. You can also use it to introduce more formal quotations or like in a research paper to set up really long quotations. Like if you're pulling a passage out of an article or out of a book and it's, well, we'll get there. We'll talk about how that will work. All right, so in this one, the college recruiter said the words I was longing to hear, colon. Congratulations, you've been accepted to the Southern Technical University of Privatized Interior Design. So you can see right, this just kind of uses the colon and the structure of the sentence to more kind of hit you with the quote. It kind of just drops it and gives it emphasis. And so that's kind of a cool effect uh, and a different effect than just saying uh, he said, like the college recruiter said. So this just gives it a little more power. At the press conference, Dr. Frankenstein made the following disclaimer, colon, I will not be making any shocking or electrifying statements about my research, right? So you can see this is a more formal alternative to your typical he said, she said setup uh, in, in a, as a way to handle a quote from someone. So it's just something to consider, right, in academic writing instead of handling the quote in, in your typical way where, you know, Dr. Frankenstein at the press conference said, comma, uh, this kind of just gives it more emphasis or more power. There, oops, I messed up there with a colon, right? Oopsie. Now, sometimes you have to introduce a longer quote or passage. Let's take a look. All right, so in this one, the passage from the novel that most impacted me said the following, colon. Then you can see that I indented and I have the quote. So a couple things about that, right? This is for longer passages that you might be pulling out of something. And you see this in research papers and, and such where you want to talk about more than just a snippet or more than just a line. The rule of thumb is that it, if it takes up three or more lines in your writing, in your, in your uh, essay do type document, then three or more lines, then you indent it. You lose the quotation marks right? And um, of course, you hit return and indent after you have the colon. So just this, this is how that would look. All right, so this is a very specialized use of the colon. Colons are used in the greeting of business letters or more formal letters. So let's take a look. All right, so uh, the first one, to whom it may concern when you don't know who you're writing to, um, colon, or if you do know, dear Mr. Big Businessman, colon. And so we don't necessarily write a lot of letters anymore, but if you think about like a cover letter or a resume, or you're trying to solicit an answer or lodge a complaint, uh, this is when that would come into place. It's more formal. You wouldn't say, dear grandmother, colon, right? Because she's your grandma and that's not a formal situation. Uh, but if it is more formal and you're trying to be professional, then the colon comes into play uh, in those kinds of writings and letters. Okay, so there you have it. I hope that was helpful, and I hope that you have a better understanding of when to use the colon and how to use the colon and how it can give you some fresher alternatives in your writing and make your writing a little more interesting, right? Because as the writer, your first and foremost responsibility is to your reader. And a bored reader is not going to be impressed with what you have to say. And so using you know, all of the elements at your disposal to make your writing more interesting and make the structure maybe a little more surprising, uh, you, should, you should use those and employ those. And the colon can be one of the things that can make that writing a little more powerful. So good luck and good writing. Hey, thanks for watching this video. It would be awesome if you could subscribe to the channel. Here are some other videos in the writing workshop playlist where it can help you become a better writer, uh, how to write essays and other things that, that I've explored with you. And then of course, some additional playlists just to check out for funsies. We'll see you soon.